Tasty pie face me, a girl you snapped. Somebody said that you was on something, and I would not be surprised. Because I knew that in that moment, when you was throwing drinks for no reason and acting like one of Peter's concubines, and talking to Jacqueline in such a way like you had lost your mind, honey, I knew you had to be lit off some liquor. But <laughs> thinking about it, like I said, somebody saying that you was possibly on something. I ain't saying it's what you do, but it's coming off to me like a person that inhales baby powder, if you will. Because it seems like people who inhale baby powder seem to get this inflated sense of self. Now, me a girl, you's a big bitch, but you small-minded as fuck. Now, when Mia first came on, I kind of liked her. I liked her for the show or whatever. I knew she was going to be a problem, but I liked her for the show. <sighs> child. Child. Because I really want to like Mia. I really want to like Mia. Because she has some funny moments. She has some cute moments. But she is extremely problematic not to mention how she came on with the lies and the thirstiness and the overtly mannish husband the husband that she can't calculate how many years he is older than her can barely calculate how old she is herself hmm. and to be honest she gives me this thing like marlo because i want to like marlo too but just can't because Marlo is a harsh product of her upbringing and the environment of her upbringing. And Mia got a lot of that too. And she all over the place. That's why I, I don't even know where to start. I'm kind of just popcorning with her right now. Because I don't even know where to start. Because she is all over the place. Her lives be all over the place. Her life be all over the place. Her kids be all over the place. Woo <sighs> child. That scene when she was having it dinner i guess it was dinner maybe it was brunch uh but when she was having that meal if you will with g and her kids on this season and them kids was just running around screaming cutting the clown honey i'm like girl you're not gonna say nothing because you are trying to work i mean you know <laughs> kids gonna be kids but <laughs> you at work also do you really think we want to like sit through a scene of your kids screaming their head off and you just acting like it's not going on it's little things like that that let me know that mia is crazy mia is accustomed to chaos and <laughs> that's probably where some of her line habit comes from because while i do feel like it's something that she probably learns coming up uh you know, with the trauma and everything, lying to get attention. Um, but I'm also thinking that she lies for her own entertainment to see things pop off, to see what happens as a result of the story that she tells. Because people will do that. Some people do lie and do things and put certain things together for their own entertainment. I know people, I have known people personally who have literally introduced people who they knew didn't need to be introduced would not click would not gel together would not get along and they introduced them simply for their own entertainment so that they can sit back and enjoy and be entertained by the drama of it all and in the midst they play mediator and best friend and all of that between the two and the whole time the only reason that they linked up, clashing like time out, is because this person intentionally put them together to watch the fuck shit unfold. And that's what Mia gives. So at the beginning of the season, I was totally on her side. Whether she was lying about the cancer thing or not, I was totally on her side. Because if she is lying about that, that really doesn't hurt anyone but herself. And you just make yourself look really foolish and really hateful for her if she lied about something like that and two on Giselle's end and you know Robin co-signing it co-signing that shit 
they look fucking foolish because why the hell are you running up on somebody yelling oh is this what cancer no cancer looks like you dumb bitch and then robin trying to co-sign and excuse every little fucking thing that gizzard does like girl do better want more for your fucking self so when mia snapped on gizzard i was out here for it she had every right to snap on her and i'm glad that she did and it ended up confirming <laughs> a lot of things that don't even need to be explained at this point about gizzard you real quick to forgive we uh no you real quick to forgive mia but <laughs> you nailed a brown skin girl to a cross honey over into little thing tisk i also feel like gizzard went out of her way and i did i say this before? no because i hadn't gotten to this but i also feel like gizzard went out of her way to apologize and make amends with mia because she knew that she had just burned the bridge with candace and she did not need mia and candace battering her all season and she definitely didn't need the enemy of her enemy becoming friends i don't know if i said that right but y'all know what i mean <laughs> now when we get to the chris thing Mia, you know you dead ass wrong. Talking about Chris was looking at you and his multiple items of footage that showed that he was not paying you no attention. Probably didn't even remember that y'all ass was at the party because he was paying you just that least of attention. You see what I'm saying? Why would you lie about something like that for no fucking reason? for your own entertainment so you that you can get some drama started and see some shit pop off and another reason i feel like mia would lie about something like that is because she wants to feel like every man wants her which a, which is a part of that toxic light skin color complex and i ain't talking about all light skins of course i am light skin obviously we ain't all like that but there are a lot of light skins that are like that that want to think everybody want them just because they light skin so they must be cute and that is absolutely not true get the fuck over yourself and i also feel like mia is one of those people that lies just so they can be included in a conversation if not somebody inviting them by what they added them inviting themselves by quote unquote relating <laughs> relating with lies lying to kick it that's what that means lying to kick it when somebody says you ain't got a lie to kick it that's what that means that they are lying so that they can be included in something now what i think she don't want to be included in allegedly this is just a theory and a theory based off observation so i think what mia doesn't want to be included in is the conversation about plastic surgeries that backfire now all jokes aside because either way i have the utmost you know sympathy and empathy for her if you know something chronic is going on with her health if anything's going on with her health that's you know fucked up don't wish that on anybody so my theory based off observation of what could be going on with Mia's health is that I believe her body could be rejecting all of the surgery that she's had because whether you have a good doctor or not you run the risk of your surgery rejecting I mean of your body rejecting the surgery because it's had major alterations that weren't done as a result of a tragic accident but done just voluntarily like <laughs> there's a saying called if it's not broke don't fix it for a reason and it's not to shame anybody getting plastic surgery it's just part of the reality that needs to be considered before you do things like that because just like when you get ear piercing or tattoos a lot of people 
don't have issues from getting ear piercings and tattoos. But there are also a lot of people whose bodies just don't respond well to it. They just don't. You know, they may not even have an allergy or anything like that. Their body just does not like the alteration and it will reject the alteration. It will eject the earring. The hole will try to close up around it. It'll become uh, spontaneously infected. Uh, Keloids could form. A whole lot of shit can happen as a result of making any voluntary alteration to your body and even non-voluntary alterations to your body. Even if Mia did have like a tragic accident that caused her to break all of her bones or fuck up the alignment or in her body or her face or anything that required her to get plastic surgery to reconstruct things, there's still a risk that comes with that. There's still a risk that the body could reject that and you know start attacking itself and this that and the third it's just always a risk when you make any type of alteration incisions and things like that on your body and I feel like based off what Nia described it sounds a lot like what K. Michelle described about her process of finding out that her body was rejecting her surgery. It sounds a lot like a lot of the people that were on her show. It sounds a lot like a lot of the stories that I have read. And one thing that sticks out to me and is a stain in my brain is when Kay Michelle said that there are a lot of people who've had plastic surgery and are going through, have gone through, will go through the body rejection. I'm using that as an umbrella term for the, you know, malfunctions that come with it. But the body rejection of the surgery, a lot of people, you know, have experienced it, will experience it, are experiencing it, but they won't honestly talk about it because they have so much guilt and shame surrounding the fact that they volunteered to get the surgery they have all of the warnings and things that people said to them before they got it when they got it after they got it and this that and the third and they feel like it's karmic they feel like they deserve it they feel like people are gonna be like i told you so blah blah blah, blah. I, I don't have no empathy for you da, 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 da. And, and they won't be honest about it because they don't want to have to deal with the backlash because even though they do still need support and they need empathy and sympathy a lot of people won't be willing to give it to them because they'll be so focused on shaming and ridiculing and he he ha ha I told you so because a lot of people are so egotistical and have a terrible attachment to wanting to be right and I feel like if there is any lie in Mia's story about her health scare that it's that and I feel like her body could be rejecting the surgery. And instead of her saying that, she would rather say that it's a cancer scare because that would get her sympathy and support quicker and more than her saying that her surgery is attacking her body and that her body is rejecting it. But with the mindset that she is not lying about the process of her health scare, I still could say that there is very well a possibility that the doctors thought it was cancer, did the test, realized that it wasn't, and still had to continue to do tests to figure out what it is. And I feel like it can go either way. She could know by now, you know, and I'm just, you know, this is alleged hypothetically, if you will. 
um, or uh, my hypothesis, if you will, on the subject, she could still be going through trying to find out specifically what it is. Or, like I said, she could already know. And she just, it has not revealed that. But it's easier for her to say, it's not cancer, but we're still doing tests. Yeah? Uh -huh. Either way, I hope that everything works out for the best on that note. And I hope I explained that well um, for everyone to <laughs> understand what I'm saying with that. Because also, it would be a major, you know, slap in the face. Because people would quickly pull up that footage of her shading Wendy when Wendy first revealed her surgeries. And, you know, and Mia so proudly went through her list of augmentations and all of that. A lot of people would be ready to throw that in her face if she came out and said her body is rejecting her surgery. Her surgery is attacking her body. And that's hell. That's hell. But now let's get to the juice, okay? Well, I'm finna have to get in her ass. And it ain't even gonna take long, honestly, because it's real simple. Why? Because both Mia and Patricia are two simple-minded mofos. And sorry, not sorry, but I automatically thought that Mia was messing around with Peter. I tried to stuff it to the back of my mind. But the more her passion on a subject that had absolutely nothing to do with her concerning a man that is not her husband or, you know, any part of her actual family. The more that shit increased and grew, I'm like, oh, girl, no. And you call it, you keep calling him brother and, oh, he met my child. He was the first son to hold my child and the third gang. Yeah. Or, you know, second, whatever it was that she said. And Mia done said enough about herself, about her marriage, about how she roll, how she move, where she come from, and all that shit at this point. For me to be able to peep when <laughs> something in the buttermilk ain't clean. And the way that she reacted also when Wendy said it, because every time Wendy said something that hit a nerve that was rooted in truth, Mia reacted very aggressively and it included when Wendy came straight out and said you must be fucking Peter and she got she got extra aggressive then and wanted to fight mm -hmm. and of course another reason can't like Mia is cause she definitely a part of the colorist crew because not only her interaction with Wendy, and you can also say her interaction with Candace, but also her interaction with Jacqueline. And Jacqueline is not dark skinned, but she is, she is light brown, dark light. <laughs> she is right in the middle and she's certainly darker than Mia. She's darker than, you know, the light skinned girls. The obviously light-skinned girls on the cast. She's kind of um, Katie's color, if you will. And yes, they do experience colorism. And Mia is definitely treating Jacqueline like she expects her and sees her as her designated ugly fat friend. And Jacqueline ain't ugly at all. So why would you see her that way? Hmm. And then you accompany that with her having a senseless animosity towards the successful independent yet also got a man and yes candace is independent because yes she comes from family money yes and has been supported by her parents and her adulthood yes but she also has her own bag has always had her own bag since being on the show <laughs> even if you just include the show and she's also shown that she's been in her bag and has committed to getting her singing career off the ground and has made a bag out of that so yes Candace is in the independent crew because she didn't have to do any of that why because she comes from money so yeah if you if you're trying to read Candace for coming from money at this point 
it's pretty obvious that you're a hater so uh yeah anywho but yeah mia definitely comes off like one of those light skins that truly believe brown skinned girls are supposed to be beneath them they're supposed to be in their shadow they not supposed to be smart they're not supposed to be confident successful and have their own money and have a man with money and a job and accolades and be liked and all of that shit they don't think brown skinned girls are supposed to have any of that let alone all of it especially if she doesn't have it for herself because the way that like skin women are treated in society she's formed a toxic attachment to that therefore she truly believes in the delusion that she a light-skinned woman because she is light-skinned is supposed to be put on a pedestal above brown-skinned women and if i'm going to parallel that everything that i just said why it seems like she has issues with wendy and candace I feel like it's also a part of the same reason why she treats Jacqueline the way that she does. Because, like I said, Mia has some traits like Marlo that I noticed. And like I said, Marlo doesn't allow Candy to really help her because it makes her feel small. It makes her feel like a charity case because she's claimed that identity over herself based off the toxic attachments that she still has to her trauma and her upbringing so somebody trying to help her makes her feel small she doesn't see it as an opportunity she doesn't see it as support she sees it as an insult and that's a reflection of how she feels about herself her own upbringing her own life her own experiences and don't get me wrong it's an explanation totally understand it's just not a excuse to treat people like shit with that being said Mia and Jacqueline stated that Jacqueline's family had taken Mia in at a point if I'm not mistaken um it seems like that was like the family where Mia finally belonged in so Mia and Jacqueline were raised like siblings and there are situations where a child is adopted and they're grateful for being adopted but they have a jealous type of resentment towards their siblings their adopted siblings because it's like yeah your parents show me love but then they also have this like that's that feeling of inadequacy because they couldn't get that love from their own parents and then they see their adopted siblings also getting that love from their own parents and especially depending on what they went through before they got there they feel like a basket case they feel like a charity case they feel like they may struggle to feel like they truly belong, like the space is truly theirs, like the house is truly theirs. And I also noticed that Mia is constantly bringing up that she lets Jacqueline borrow things, what she does for Jacqueline, what she gives to Jacqueline. And it's like that makes her feel better about herself. It makes her feel bigger. It makes her feel taller because she still identifies as an outcasted child so even though she may have some genuine love for Jacqueline she also has some genuine hate for Jacqueline rooted in resentment and envy like why does she get to have all of these things naturally and I don't and that's a that's a double layer of that because not only is it that color complex of oh this brown skinned girl is you know beautiful bubbly da 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 but also her parents love her her parents are in her life they support her and yeah they took me in but damn why couldn't my parents do that and understandably it you know creates that inner anger that inner resentment it creates more shit for someone who has been an orphan to have to deal with and heal and let me do say light love and healing to her and anybody else who has been an orphan and struggled with those feelings and you know even more that 
come with being an orphan. Definitely light, love, and healing to her. Light, love, and healing to you all concerning that. It's just not an excuse for Mia to treat people like shit. And with all that being said, on top of me still feeling like she probably fucked Peter, I feel like her, you know, struggles as an orphan is also a part of why she probably attaches herself quickly to certain people, such as Peter. <laughs> it's like she desperately wants to belong and be included somewhere. Because all of that was absolutely unnecessary. Like, Peter's a bitch for fucking even telling me of that and voicing that to somebody else that wasn't Wendy and doing all that extra shit because if it was that easy for Mia to get up Mia and Sharice to get up go over there and ask him what his beef was with Wendy and he tell them this story and this and that and the third if it was really that big of an issue he could have also pulled Wendy to the side <laughs> before all of that after all of that or whatever he could have pulled Wendy to the side and been like hey I've been feeling some type of way did you not you know what I'm saying get my text get my call get my email whatever what have you you know it's been a long time shouldn't have left you without a dope beat to step two step two step two but instead he pulled that bitch fired ass shit and left Wendy to be step two step two step two by Mia's old crater face ass sounding like a concubine um you didn't check in with daddy you're supposed to check in with daddy and like wendy said you and your husband might do all of that but me and mine's don't <laughs> and no me it didn't say exactly that of course that's my improvisation based off the concubine hole that she sound like that's exactly what she sound like and what it's given step into wendy on some shit that ain't got nothing to do with her especially when her and wendy like <laughs> Like, I can imagine how Wendy felt. I don't fuck with this girl. I don't talk to this girl. Like, we not cool. We not friends. She ain't my round. But all of a sudden, I'm sitting up here eating my food, minding my business, trying to enjoy the vacation or whatever. And she comes sit down to the table talking about, Peter got beef with you. This ain't what you doing business. You ain't call him. That's my family. You supposed to check in when he come into town. You and you didn't do all of that. Don't do that, Wendy. Don't do that, Wendy. 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 Like, girl, what? <laughs> what? It's a wonder Wendy didn't automatically go to town on her ass. Because, girl, what? And then you throw a drink in her face because she says she don't check in with other men. Girl. <laughs> and that's when you know somebody got deeper issues. And I already talked about what I think them deeper issues is. And girl, the playing victim after you went out your way to break your own nails. I cannot. But that's the same victim she played after she picked a fight with Candace last season. But people weren't quick to see it then because a lot of people don't want to like Candace, right? Child. It takes certain things to be served to people in certain ways for them to grasp the concept. While some of us believe when people show us who they are the first time. Because also, Mia was not bothered by that yo mama comment that Candace spit out. She was not bothered by that shit for real, for real, until everybody else was bothered. It's like a child is doing something that they know they ain't got no business. They hurt themselves doing it. And then everybody has a drastic response, more drastic than what they have. And then all of a sudden, they want to cry because they seen everybody else reacting to it. <laughs> weak-minded shit and of course the child is weak-minded because they're a child but when you see adults do that shit that shit is unacceptable and it's something that needs to be worked out in therapy <laughs> and while we on the subject of her mama a lot of people you know get a little perturbed when mia is still talking about her mama they say she used her mama for a storyline they say she needs to shut the fuck up and get over it and all of that i'm not gonna say that because that's me a experience and if her mama traumatized her <laughs> that's that's not her fault like most people 
are talking about the traumas that have been inflicted on them from their parents. So why does Nia have to shut the fuck up? Why is Nia ridiculed for, quote unquote, using her mama as a storyline? Because y'all don't like her? I don't like her either, but I'm not going to disregard her trauma just because I call myself not liking her. <laughs> That's her drama, bro. Like, and true enough, maybe her mama has, you know, gotten better. Maybe her mama is on the right track and going to stay on the right track. But if Mia don't trust her mama, I can't blame her because how many times and for how many years has Mia's mama fucked up her trust? She left her to be an orphan. She made her an orphan. Both of her parents essentially made her an orphan. So just because her mama is in her life now and and has been doing good, you know, for the past couple of months, years, whatever, what have you, doesn't mean that all of her trauma and all of that just goes out of the window. <laughs> like, no, she got decades of shit to clean up. And I'm, I'm talking about Mia in particular, like their relationship, both of them have to work towards that. But, you know, Mia does have to be responsible for her own healing. And a part of that is her talking about her experience and being honest about her experience. And honestly, the sooner and more honest that she is about her experience, the more honest she will be across the board. We may stop getting all these goddamn lies.